TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. It's time to say goodbye to hold music and say hello to fast customer support with Service Cloud. With trusted AI and data working together, you can skip long wait times and deliver efficient, personalized service right away, all while keeping support costs low and more customers happy. Reimagine your customer support with the number one AI CRM for service. Learn what's possible at salesforce.com slash products slash service. This episode is brought to you by JLL. Get an insider view into the world of commercial real estate with JLL's podcast, Trends and Insights, the Future of Commercial Real Estate. Whether you're curious about making cities more sustainable, the evolution of office space, or AI opportunities, this podcast will help keep you a step ahead. Tune in for candid conversations with business leaders about the biggest trends impacting how we live, work, and play. Subscribe to Trends and Insights now at jll.com slash podcast. Welcome to The Age of Jeremy. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to this podcast. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Age of Jeremy. I am the leader when it comes to advice with business content, creation, software, taxes, investment, education, and all the hobbies that I enjoy. Also, follow our podcast network, The Age of Radioverse, on Instagram at Age of Radioverse. It's owned by my media company called Age of Radio, and we're going to be taking over the world here um, moving forward. And we have over 100 podcasts, so make sure that you head on over to ageofradio.org forward slash shows or just ageofradio.org or even ageofradio.com and check out all the amazing podcasts that we have. We're going to be doing a lot to move this company forward. You can also check me out on TikTok at Age of Jeremy and Twitter at Age of Jeremy Q. If you want to be on this podcast and chat, email me at jeremy.quintanilla at ageofradio.org. You can find that email in the podcast dis- episode description. We are always looking for small business owners and content creators to share their stories, no matter how small, no matter how big, we just love a good story. If you want to get more involved with Age of Radio and the amazing tribe that we are building around podcasts and all things geekdom, um, I actually include everything in geekdom, so it can be anything because, well, as Tina says in Bob's Burger, you can be a geek about anything, and that is our goal. So if you want to be part of our community, head on over to Facebook, type in Addicted to Podcast podcasting addicted to podcasting and you will find our facebook group and then we will also be going forward we will be making a discord that really um creates a lot of community uh and a way for all of the people that love podcasting to connect and geek out about all of the things that they love so if you want first dibs on this discord make sure that you go to our addicted to podcasting facebook group and follow again all this stuff is free you don't have to pay for anything so no really reason no real reason that i can think of for you not to go and be a part of the community because as i've learned over my years with 3T Warrior Academy, nothing is more powerful than the tribe, something that I continuously talk about from a good man named Seth Godin that I learned a lot of that from, um, and then watching what Coach JV has done with our community over the many, many years and growing it. We have... Um, Finished up our 2022 Freedom Conference. It was a blast. If anybody that's listening to it was able to attend it, I want to take this time right now to thank you so much for your support with our Freedom Conference. It went amazing. I hope some of the listeners that listen to this podcast are also part of our 3T Warrior Academy family, and I appreciate you, and I thank you, and I want to tell you um, that I couldn't be here without you, and I also couldn't be out here with all of the other listeners, whether you're part of the 3T Warrior Academy or not. I am creating a legacy and building multiple businesses, building a conglomerate, I guess you could say. And I am thankful for anybody that is part of the community that I am building with my businesses. All right, let's get on with the show. My name is Jeremy Quintanilla. You are listening to Age of Jeremy. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm the co-founder of Age of Radio and 3T Fitness and well, other businesses that I am working on. This podcast is about everything that I learn and the trials and tribulations it took to learn them. I hope you enjoy. Last week, I did not have my voice. 
So I did not come out with the podcast. I thought my voice was going to come back. In fact, I thought my voice was gone from screaming at our warrior conference, but that was not the case. My voice was gone because I apparently had some kind of weird sick bug that I ended up getting antibiotics for. It wasn't COVID. Tested for COVID multiple, multiple times. And the likelihood of me getting COVID is lower because I have all three of my vaccines. Um, no matter what your belief is on that, you can believe whatever you want. I have vaccines because vaccines are dope. And... Um, Western medicine can be dope. Hate doctors, and I actually hate a lot of Western medicine. Um, but in you know, certain things can be amazing. Like um, uh, when we look at antibiotics, antibiotics is probably one of the most um, important discoveries using the fungi that we use in the antibiotic um, to kill bacterial infections. Maybe I'm not a doctor. Maybe that's what it does. I don't know. Go read some books. But point is, is I knew it wasn't COVID. And I also tested for COVID because we are going to be going on a cruise here soon. And I definitely do not want to get sick and not be able to go on my amazing, amazing cruise. So that being said, I didn't really have anything planned for this podcast, so, but something that I'm really wanting to talk to people about is uh, I want to talk to people about efficiency and I want to talk to people about planning because those are two main th concepts that I have been thinking and talking a lot about on my, uh, um, on my um, social media posts. And because of that, I think that that's kind of where I'm going to, that's kind of going to be like my thing. Like, I think that that's going to be my thing. Um, I don't know if you ever listen to a lot of like influencers, they always have like something that they're constantly always talking about. And I think efficiency and planning are going to be, that's what I'm always going to be talking about now, because that's my message, because I know how important those two things are. And I know that I'm constantly trying to get better with my efficiencies. And, I'm all, and because of that, I'm also try, always trying to get better with planning. So I wanted to talk you know, I talked a little bit about like how to plan and how to block out time. And that's not really what I want to talk about in this episode. If you want to learn more about that, um, A, read um, First Things First by Stephen Covey or Covey or however you pronounce the name. And then also read uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by um, Stephen Covey, because those are probably the two most important books besides, you know, those, you know, those other motivational ones where you want to, you know, kind of think and grow rich, I guess. Those are probably my two most favorite motivational books. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is an actual motivational book, I think. It has some really good habits that you can pick up, hence why it's called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And then the first things first is actually a like kind of like a workbook, a roadmap on how to plan your life. And I think that people, the caveat that I would say to this is people get too strict on their planning and they don't have wiggle room. You have to be, you have to be okay with it. Like you have to be okay if something changes, right? But you cannot not plan. That's the, I guess that's the, the, the middle ground is like, you need to plan all of your time if you can, but then if you don't do it, you can't be mad about it, but then you have to continuously try to get better. And that's where the efficiency comes in. So if you have a business or you are starting out in content creation, or you're starting out to try to be an influencer or whatever the case is. I will tell you this, you have to plan and plan and plan and plan out your strategy and then you aggressively execute it. And so I'm going to give you an example of me personally. So if you go over to my TikTok, it's at Age of Jeremy and you look at some of the new content that I'm putting out, it is me kind of like having a whiteboard and talking about things and writing on the whiteboard and explaining them. But I have it exactly as the dimensions of the phone. And I was able to do that with Adobe Captivate. Okay. So I know that my plan, right? Here's my plan is to release four TikToks every single day. Okay. How do I do that? And am I going to consistently do it? I hope so. That's how I'm going to be successful. Uh, and I'm going to try to keep doing it. So I know that that's my plan for, for, um, TikTok today. And how to remind myself how to do that is I have a timer on my phone for every starting at 10, every three or four hours, and it goes off and I'm going to post to social media and I go on there and I make a TikTok. Now I'm not, so, so that's the plan. That's how I'm going to remember to do it. So where does the efficiency come in? So the efficiency comes in by being able to know the, the, the way that I want to do the content. Like I want to, at least on my days that I'm not at 3T Warrior Academy, I want to create those type of three minute videos in TikTok that use my whiteboard 
and go on there. So I needed to know how to make that super efficient. So Saturday, I spent time timing it on how, no, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday or Saturday, one of those days, I spent time figuring out how to time, how to do that in the most efficient way, where at a specific time on Mondays and Thursdays and Fridays, when I'm not at 3T Warrior Academy at the actual fitness center or at our actual executive offices in Mesa, Arizona, I can get my um, Huon, my little tablet, display tablet, I can get that I can open up Adobe Captivate, which is the my preferred software, Go Adobe. I can open Adobe Captivate. I can get it set up super fast. I can make the video. I can trim the video that I want. And then I can export it in the dimensions that I want based off of the TikTok. And I tried that today, right? I'm recording this on Monday. You're listening to it on Tuesday. So on Monday, I did it. And I was able to do it in like five minutes. So I was able to get my Huion tablet, open up my Adobe Captivate, make the content, trim what I needed, export it in the way that I needed to it. And I can do it in five and 10 minutes. That is what I'm talking about. Trying to continuously improve your process because the reason why a lot of this goes for businesses and content creators. The reason why a lot of businesses fail is because the owner or the person that's doing the majority of the work or any of the workers aren't being more efficient with their processes. And they're not re looking at them and saying, how can I make this better? And they're not getting advice from the people that do that every day on how we can make this better so that we can shorten that time. Right? Because we're in an age when content, whether you're a business making content to get people into your store, or you're just a content creator and you're making content, we're in a a world where we have to get that media out there. You know, it has to be, it has to have quality right? And there has to be quantity in it. So you're staying in front of everybody. And the only way to do that is to create an efficiency. So my plan is, is that I have my alarm go off. I know that I'm going to post to TikTok. I know that I'm going to post to Instagram. I know that I'm going to do Twitter. I'm going to go over to my age of radio Instagram. I'm going to post on age of radio. And I'm going to relook at these things at the end of the month to say, Hey, was I successful? Did I get better? This is the continuous improvement part. And this is the thing that you have to be okay with saying, I did shitty at this, right? I've been doing a shitty job, certain things with age of radio, right? I haven't been scheduling that time. I've been doing a shitty job with certain things with 3T Warrior Academy, right? My job is to make sure that the books are getting done. I have all this other shit that's happening, whether, whether it's in 3T Academy or not, where there's not time that's being actively put in these books that are super important to, for, you know, coach to know, or John to know what the business is doing so that he can make really good decisions or if we need to tighten up expenses or if we need to loosen up expenses. So you can always, always improve. But the only way that you're going to continuously improve is if you're willing to get feedback from everybody around you and you're willing to look at yourself and give yourself honest feedback about what you are specifically doing. The more that you get better at looking at yourself and judging yourself, I know that sounds bad, but looking at yourself and judging yourself, you will realize that you're probably doing a shitty job at a lot of things. Whether or not that shitty job is like mounds better than what other people do, you are probably could be doing better. And, and if you're continuously looking at that and continuously improving, then you will always stay ahead of the game. And that's one of the reasons why certain content creators, they last forever. Certain content creators fade away. Certain businesses last forever and certain businesses fade away is because they're continuously improving. So that's the efficiency part. And the Japanese have a word for this. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I think it's Kaizen. And it's this concept of continuously improving, but not only continuously improving by you looking at it, but getting the people that can see you give you that feedback and looking at the other people in around you, giving you that feedback. Because you're not going to be at every point of contact within your business or within your process workflow. So if there is a hiccup in your process workflow, if you don't know about it, then you are going to have a problem later on. And so that's one of the things that we try to instill in everybody that we work with. If something doesn't work right for you or work right at all, then you need to say, hey, I cannot... I cannot have this. I need to change this. This is what I think could be changed that'll make this more efficient. Are you okay with us trying that? And if you are a good leader, you're going to say, absolutely, I'm okay with trying that. I think that that's a great idea. Or you can say, I don't think that's a great idea, but let's see what it does. And if it works out, then you just go back and say, hey, you know what? I was wrong. And there is nothing wrong with that. The goal of the business is to last into perpetuity and to make a profit, right? (laughs) 
and okay, so that was a super capitalist shitty thing for me to say. But so let me go back. The purpose of the business is to extend, is to go into perpetuity, okay, and to create benefit for all of its stakeholders. Whether that's creating profit or if it's building up a community or it's creating a tribe or it's 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 solving some world problem. It doesn't necessarily have to be about profit because if it did, we wouldn't have nonprofits that make you know, a great deal of impact in the world without getting any profit, but, you know, pay their people pretty well, right? And so you always have to be continuously improving and it's, you got to be okay with looking at yourself and letting other people look at you and tell you what you can be doing better and then getting your shit together, right? Or G-S-G-Y-S-D, Geist. Yeah, Geisting. Gausting, Geisting. Yeah. So the planning part this is something that I've been talking about on TikTok. I came across TikTok and it said, it said that, and, and I knew this somewhat about the Japanese society, but there is more businesses in Japan that are a hundred years old than in any other place in the entire world. I don't know if I'm quoting that right. Go look it up on TikTok. Go do your own research. The whole thing could be a lie. Who knows? I didn't do any research prior to saying this. So that's on me. But let's say that that is accurate. The reason why is because I do know this. I know that Sony has a hundred year plan. Okay. Most of us don't even have a hundred year plan for our life. And we're expecting something miraculous to happen. The reason why the planning is so important. And again, the caveat is it's hard because you're putting these confinements around yourself that say at this specific dates, I have to be at this place. And the problem is a lot of time when we don't make those, you know, those dates, we kind of, or those milestones, we beat ourselves up. You can't beat yourself up. It's got to be okay. The point is to continuously improving and getting better at it. But if you don't have a plan for your life, where are you going? And I think that I plan, I, I need to plan better, but I can understand why someone might think that I over plan. Okay. Because I'm constantly always trying to plan things and that can be pretty shitty sometimes. And one of the things that I've learned is like going on vacation. There's a couple of days I don't want to plan anything because we just want a free for all. So plan your free for all, right? If you don't have a plan for your life, like I said, you're not going to get anywhere. If you don't know where the end is, how do you know where you're going? And that's why most people never get anywhere in their lives. They don't get anywhere in their lives because they have no plan for it. They don't know where they want to end up right? Or they just want to, I don't know how to say this without it being sounding bad. You know, so I apologize if this sounds bad. Most people just want to, they, they think that by not planning and being a free spirit, they're going to have more fun. But the thing is, is they may be having more fun now, but then later on in life, when they're past that fun part of, you know, that, and by fun, I mean, going out, drinking, partying, having, you know, hookups and things like that is that that you really want that for your whole life and if the answer is no then you should plan what you want your life to be and set milestones where you want to be right i wanted to be out of wells fargo before i was 40 i want to have i want to have my own financial firm by the time i'm 40 okay and I know that I want age of radio to become the largest media conglomerate in the world before I die. I want it to be a billion dollar company by the time I'm 50. Okay. I want to spend more time with my family and go on more trips. I want, even though she has a lot of work to do, Ariana to be able to move forward and have a productive life and hopefully work for the family business. I want the people in and I want to do that by the time that she's out of college where she is stable, structured, can have a life, have her own house, start working in business, create her businesses, right? Oversight our businesses and keep working. And I want that for the other kids. And if I can ever get in contact with my brother and sister, I would love to have that for my brother and sister. And, and, and I know that those are the things that I'm working for and I have to continually work for them, right? I know when I want to die. I know when I want to retire. I know where I want to retire. I know what I want to do after I retire. And that may sound weird to a lot of people, but when I die, I want to be completely used up, right? I want to be like, have had fun, have done all of this stuff, traveled the world, had a yacht, had a plane, been able to go anywhere, take care of my parents, 
you know, as they get older, take care of my wife's parents as they get older. These are all part of things that are inside of my plan for my life. And you need to have that plan for your life. And then you need to work with your kids and your kids' kids to have plans for their lives, right? Based off of what they want, but to have it down. So you know what's going to happen in generations after you. That's the other part about generational wealth. We are so concerned about the wealth part of the generational wealth. We don't think about the planning part of the generational wealth, right? If I make a billion dollars and I want that to be generational wealth for multiple families, for multiple generations of families, and then to be able to go and do good in the world and run for offices and be part, you know, productive members of society and, you know, philanthropy and, you know, give to the hungry and, or give to the the needy and, and build, you know, you know, orphanages and shit like that. That has to be ingrained in them as they're growing up. And that has to be in a 200 year plan, right? So that's the hundred years of your life, hundred years of your kids' lives. And it sucks because we live in a society where we want our kids to kind of like do, be able to say, oh, I'm going to live my own life and not force them on them. And you shouldn't force it on them. You should be educating them as they're growing up that these these things are available to them as you're building that generational wealth. And then hopefully they take that. If they don't, can't be mad at them, right? Maybe you have multiple kids. You go on to the next one. Maybe you have nieces and nephews. You go on to them. There's always these, uh, these other opportunities to have that legacy because you, you never know. Your child may not want to follow in your footsteps. I get that. And, and when they're growing up, they definitely don't want to follow in your footsteps. And so, but it has to be part of the plan and it has to be part of the conversation. And so when you take that concept out of your life and you put it back into a business, you need to do the same damn thing for your business, right? What happens to 3 War Academy when John dies? What happens to 3 War Academy when little John goes away, when I go away, when Ariana goes away? All of us end, Right. And so you need to have that plan in place for that business to continue on into perpetuity based off of its mission. If our mission is to say, if is to, you know, help one life ever, you know, help someone um, to help someone's life every single day. Right. And, and, and we're doing that and living that that has to go on past us. And if you have that hundred year plan about how you're going to not only create this content, hit this milestone, hit this KPI, then how are you going to get to that next, you know, get to that next level? And so when I think about that, what have I done to set those specific KPIs for my business? You know, we talk about them. Does everybody know what they are? No, of course not. We don't talk about it enough. We don't set that enough. We don't say at this time we should have, we should be at $200,000 in sales. What are the things that we're going to do every month to get to $200,000 in sales? And then look at those things and say, okay, here's a scorecard. This is where we're at. This is what we've done. This is where we missed the mark. We need to do a much better job at that. And you can do that for multiple, multiple, multiple years. And the longer out you can do that, and the more you involve the people in that, the further your business is going to get. The problem with that is that that takes a lot of hard work and that's where people don't want to do it, especially if they are just starting out in their business and they're just starting to see success because they're going to be happy about that success. I don't, I mean, I get happy about success. I don't get that happy about it because I knew that it was going to happen. If I know something's going to happen, why am I going to be excited about it? Right. It's not a surprise. Okay. And I know that sometimes frustrates people, but when, when we made our first, you know, million dollars, cool. We made a million dollars. I knew we were going to make a million dollars. It's no big, it's nothing new. I'm happy that we did it. I knew you were going to do it. I knew you would figure it out. I knew that we would manage the money. I knew all of that. It's okay. How do we get to our next milestone? Right. And, and, you know, it's not to say that I'm not happy about it. It's just, I was happy about it when we started because I knew we were going to do it. So I already lived it. You can live it now, but I'm on to the next thing. And so, so how do you do that? How, how do you do that when you're just starting to get a success? That's, that's daunting. That can cause a lot of anxiety. But the key is, is if you can learn to manage that anxiety and learn to do that planning and learn to set those goals and learn to look at the activities to get to those goals and do that for 50, 100, 150, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 years, your business is going to be around a long time and you are going to have changed the world. And I hope that that is your ultimate goal. And the goal isn't to just make money. If your goal is just to make money, kudos to you. You will make money. I guarantee you, if you say I'm going to go and make money, you will go and make money because you will constantly be trying to make money and you will not have a, you will not be able to make money, right? If you go and sell yourself and your services, you will make money. But that in my opinion, is not the ultimate goal. 
The ultimate goal is for me to provide value to all of the stakeholders that are involved, the stakeholders that are in Glendale, Arizona and Mesa, Arizona, all of the 3T Warrior Academies, all of the people that are around the in, in the 3T Warrior Academy around the world. Those are all the stakeholders and I want them all to get benefited. All the people that work for Age of Radio, all the people that will start helping with Q Financial, all the people that are in Q Digital that owns my portion of Fiend's crypto assets and some other digital assets and some other digital asset companies that we'll be creating. You have to have this long plan and you have to write it down and you have to consistently look at it and look at the milestones that you're focused on. And then look at those milestones. Think of how you can improve and then make the changes necessary to make those improvements and then add them into your plan and continue. That is one of the ultimate goal keys to success is the efficiency and the planning. And I hope that you take something from this podcast and you or podcast episode and you go and you implement those things into your life and in your business to try to make things more efficient and to continuously plan for hundreds and hundreds of years. We'll talk to you soon. Remember, be thankful, grateful, and kind. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to The Age of Jeremy. Make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcatcher. If you can do me a favor, please rate this podcast if your podcatcher allows you to. Talk to you soon. Okay, everybody, it's Michael E. Cullen II. And I'm Sesame Encarta from the All Too Real 2 podcast. We're passionate about movies, TV, and pretty much all things pop culture. Dive into the chaos of failed sitcoms, direct-to-video sequels, and the quirky realms of cinema and TV. Join us every Thursday for your dose of All Too Real 2 entertainment. We'll guide you through debates like whether Howard the Duck qualifies as a superhero. Ponder if Larry the Cable Guy could be the new rock or Schwarzenegger. Discover if some shows and movies should have stayed in the cutting room. Ever heard of a sitcom featuring that dictator with the funny mustache? Well, we watched it. We're dedicated to unraveling the peculiarities of pop culture, sometimes with awesome guests. So, if you're into the eccentric world of pop culture, listen and subscribe to All Too Real 2. Available wherever you find podcasts and on Age of Radio.